Good morning, it's 8 a.m. and here in Central Florida. <clears throat> Gotta navigate from uh, the South Kissimmee area up to Mid Kissimmee. Where I'm having clinic this morning. A little bit different route than usual. A lot of traffic as always coming out of Poinciana. I've already activated FSD. This is version 12.5.1.3, which overall has performed pretty well. It still ignores barricades, ignores potholes, it ignores speed limit signs that are not black print on a white background. It still drives too fast on ramps, on ramps, off ramps, that sort of thing. But overall does a pretty good job. There have been problems in the last couple of versions with finishing the drive because it's been missing the entrance to the destination, sometimes turning early, sometimes turning late, resulting in the FSD basically getting lost even though the GPS was showing the correct route, the FSD took the incorrect route. So there's still some work to be done. Every time they add some features and fix one area, sometimes other bugs pop up. That's fairly typical for software development, particularly when there's not a lot of testing between versions. And the last couple of versions were released within a week of each other, so there really wasn't much time for internal testing before these were released to the public. This is Reeves Road, which connects Pleasant Hill Road to Poinciana Boulevard. It's kind of a rural residential road, but it gets a lot of traffic from commuters. I'm wearing sunglasses, so I just got a first nag for the steering wheel, which I answered by moving the volume control up and down. It's a little inconsistent. Sometimes you can wear the sunglasses and it'll go for an hour or more without bugging you. But it definitely at this level can't do eye tracking with sunglasses on. There's another one. Maybe it saw me look at the camera. This camera mount isn't the most stable in the world, so sometimes I hold on to the selfie stick when we're accelerating to keep the camera from tipping over. I'm not using automatic speed adjustment, as I find it drives too fast for conditions usually. I'm in the average assertiveness level in the configuration of the FSD. And I have the speed set with an offset I believe it's 12% above the legal limit, which at high speed generally keeps me less than 10 miles an hour over the speed limit, which seems to be the threshold here in Florida for getting a speeding ticket. The police will almost never bother you if you're within 10 miles an hour of the speed limit. At the higher end, though, they might jump on you in a neighborhood if you're going 35 and a 45. Maybe that was a little bit wide on that turn, but we did manage to stay in the lane. We had the red light, but it did stop and check to see that there was oncoming left turn traffic. So our path for a right turn was clear, so it went ahead and proceeded without me having to give a nudge, which is good because there was at least one car behind me. As you can see on the left here, they are changing this into a four-lane road, which is badly needed. To the left of the construction is a large swamp area full of all kinds of creatures, everything from deer to bobcats to wildcats to Florida panthers, 
even uh, black bear. Not to mention foxes and coyotes. In the new construction part, they've elevated the road quite a bit, presumably to hold back flooding for when we have tropical storms that tend to flood out the swamp area. So even though there was crossing traffic ahead, the car had calculated that it wasn't going to be going to be a factor that would require us to do any braking. Earlier versions sometimes would be kind of timid about that. I read online that there have been instances of uh, this version of FSD ignoring school zones. There is a school zone up ahead, but since it's already 8, 11 a.m., I'm not sure if it's still going to be active. So the new air quality index feature says the air quality this morning is at a, looks like it's 51, very small print. 61 actually, okay. Accidentally expanded the route. Not always that easy to get it to close. Let's go ahead and turn off the radar detector. Not going to be a lot of high speed movement in this traffic. May as well save the battery. Yep, school zone, 20 miles an hour wind flashing, the sign says. Again, with so much traffic, not much of a factor. You can see the red indicating the heavy traffic on the screen here. I'm recording again using the Acaso Brave 7E action camera in 4K super wide mode this time. With the camera mounted on the selfie stick wedge between the driver's seat and the center console. So we'll see how it does at the destination this time. The destination is uh, our small office building. So we have to turn off of a main road and then into the parking lot. At which time I can normally do the auto park after disconnecting FSD. Yesterday I gave the full video 16 minutes, which included some of this dead time with in previous videos, I would tend to play at 8x speed when I wasn't speaking or when there wasn't anything interesting to show just to tighten up the video. What do you think? you like the shortened version or you like the full 1x version? Of course, I could publish it both ways if there was much interest. Yesterday's video was actually edited on the phone, so the audio quality for picking up my voice was not as good as it usually is when I use Final Cut Pro. I used CapCut on the phone yesterday because I just had two video segments to link because of the way the camera saves video to the memory card. So a guy on the motorcycle is wearing a t-shirt. I can't read the whole thing, but at the top it says, Life is short. Maybe it's supposed to be short if you spend a lot of time cutting between lanes. I guess there wasn't enough traffic here, so they're building some more apartment complexes along the side of the road. A lot of people still moving here to the free state of Florida from other parts of the country.
I took delivery of this Tesla Model Y Performance on March 19th of this year and I'm about to cross the 20,000 mile mark. The only maintenance so far has been washer fluid. which is pretty typical of my first Tesla Model Y, which I kept for three years, getting about 90,000 miles out of it. There's a left turn about two miles ahead, and the left turn lane is pretty narrow, and there's always a lot of traffic there this time of the day. The intersection in question is between Poinciana Boulevard which we're on now, going northbound, and the Earl of Von Brunson Memorial Freeway or Highway 192 or Vine Street, depending on which part of the road you're on, which is the main tourist area road inside of Kissimmee. So it's an intersection of uh, two four lane roads, each of which with left turn lanes. Sometimes it takes two or three light changes to get through this intersection. And it is painted red on the GPS screen. With the traffic lined up about 0.7 miles from the intersection. This does make people impatient and it's not unusual to have people cut in front of you into the left turn lane. So I have the battery running the camera, but I do have a power cable plugged into it, but the battery is starting to show red, so there's a possibility the camera is going to cut out before the end of the drive. With most of these cameras, if you have a power cord connected, the battery life won't matter. But maybe this one charges slower than it expends battery in this mode. So we'll see how that goes. I just plugged a higher power cable into the camera, but it's only drawing two watts, so that's probably a limitation of the camera because this particular cable is capable of charging at 30 watts. It does look like this cable is helping though because the battery indicator on the uh, camera now is showing all green where previously it was showing red. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a book I wrote, How to Steal from a Medical Practice. It's really all about embezzlement and how to prevent it. A catchy title, right? I did the title photo myself, just using a random glass with a $50 bill. Took the picture. Not a very long book, but has some useful information if you operate a medical or dental practice and want to uh, know if your employees are stealing from you and what to do about it. It's actually an amazingly common problem. Probably 60 to 80 percent of medical and dental practices have had employees stealing in one way or another. And of course the majority never get caught and even of those that do get caught, a certain percentage don't even lose their jobs, much less get prosecuted. I talk about all that in the book as well, but you can find this on Amazon and various other venues. It's not available in audio, but it is available in ebook format. 
But again, it's How to Steal a Medical Practice by Donald Elton. That's me. So we're getting up here to where the left turn lane starts. Looks like we'll be following the pickup truck. Thanks to the traffic, I'm running about 15 minutes late getting to the office. But given the load of paperwork we pile on the patients, the patients are hardly ever ready to be seen before 9. So we should be good. I'm only one and a half miles away from the destination. So again, stay tuned so we can find out how well it handles the arrival. It's only been about 50-50 handling the arrival correctly on the last couple of versions. Just took off the sunglasses. I've got fairly heavily tinted windows all the way to the legal limit. So far it's taken us about three light changes to get through this intersection. And as I mentioned ahead, there's somebody cutting in at the very end into the left turn lane in front of this pickup truck. At least we have the green arrow, so it's a little easier than it is sometimes when you have to sneak across through traffic. And we need to get over to the right pretty quickly. It's only 0.3 miles away from the right turn on the Polynesian Isle Boulevard. We got a gap, so here we go. Pretty day today. I can see some scattered thunderstorms off in the distance. So we made our legal stop and then we creep out. Pedestrians out of the way. This right lane, you have to merge pretty quickly. And there's a car coming up behind us, so I guess we'll let him pass first. One mile from destination. Now I see the car has noticed that I don't have the glasses. It's showing a little green dot. So it is doing the eye tracking now. So we just went into the right lane, but we're going to need the left lane again in half a mile. couple cars coming up on the left. So I'll have to let them get by us. You can see the destination up here on the map now. Point four miles to the turn. So it looks like we're going to make the correct turn onto the access road here at least. And then there's a left turn into the parking lot. We'll see if you can make that. The sign already says autopilot navigation complete. So yes it does turn into the lot so that's a uh, that's a win. So I will disconnect and I can go ahead and choose a parking place. I imagine in a future version you'll be able to auto park from within FSD. So far we have to disconnect FSD and then choose the spot manually. Auto Park's been really great. I haven't seen any Auto Park errors in a while now. So that's it for today. Time to get to work.